Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. In our study of comparative statics, we looked at the direction of the changes in price and quantity. However, often when we're applying economics in the real world, we don't just care about the direction of the change in the predicted price or the predicted quantity, but we also want to work out whether the change is big or small. In other words, what's the size? of the relevant change. To do that, we have to introduce the concept of elasticity. To see the issue, let's use a simple example where the supply curve shifts to the right. For example, it may be because of an improvement in technology that's reduced the cost for producers and sellers of the product. As the supply curve moves to the right, our prediction is that the equilibrium price will fall and the quantity traded will increase. That's our comparative static prediction as we move from our original equilibrium to our new equilibrium. But suppose we want to know more than simply the direction of change. For example, we might want to know how big is the increase in the quantity traded when, for example, the price level drops by, say, 1%. To work out how big the quantity change is going to be, we're going to need a measure of how quantity changes when the price changes. And that's going to be one of our elasticity measures. It's in fact going to be the own price elasticity. Let me define what we mean by elasticity. An elasticity is simply the percentage change in quantity divided by the percentage change in something else. So our elasticity measure is going to tell us how quantity changes when something else changes, and we're looking at percentage changes. So in our example, where we had a rightward shift in the supply curve, if we want to know what the change in quantity is, we need to answer the question, how big is the percentage change in quantity given the percentage drop in the price? Notice that the movement here is along the demand curve. Even though the supply curve shifts, that leads to a movement along the demand curve. So we're going to ask, what is the percentage change in the quantity demanded, i.e. on the demand curve, when there is a change in the price? and that's defined as the own price elasticity of demand. So here we've got the formula for the own price elasticity of demand. The product that we're referring to, we'll just refer to by the letter I. If you want to put a product to it, call it ice cream. We're looking at the quantity demanded of ice cream, which is what the little d up here as a superscript is, and the q just simply stands for quantity. And to read the top line, it simply says what is the percentage change, that's what this triangle or the symbol delta means, it means change in. So we've got the percentage change in the quantity of good i that is demanded that's what the top of our fraction says, divided by the percentage change in the price of good I. So what this formula says, the elasticity formula, or the own price elasticity of demand says, is what is the percentage change in the quantity of ice cream demanded when there is a 1% change in the price of ice cream. And that is what this fraction will give us. Another way to think about it is that the own price elasticity of demand tells us how we move along the demand curve for, in this case, good I. It tells us for a 1% drop in the price of good I, what is the percentage change in the quantity of good I that consumers demand. Note that a 1% increase in the price of good I will generally lead to a fall in the quantity of good I that consumers demand. So a 1% increase in the price of good I will lead to 
a decrease in the quantity of good eye demanded. And similarly, if the price of good eye falls, then that will tend to lead to an increase in the quantity of good eye demanded. Or in other words, the top of our fraction and the bottom of our fraction are going to have a different sign. If the top of the fraction is positive, that's because the bottom of the fraction is negative. The price has fallen. If the bottom of a fraction is positive, the price goes up, we expect the top of the fraction to be negative. That just reflects that our demand curve slopes down. So we expect our own price elasticity of demand to be a negative number. Whenever the demand curve slopes down, the own price elasticity of demand will be negative. Now, while the own price elasticity of demand is always going to be negative, just to confuse you, economists often leave the negative sign out. So they will often refer to own price elasticity of demand as if it was a positive number. It's not. It's a negative number. It's simply confusing to refer to it as a positive number. But hey, I have to follow everyone else, and most economists will refer to the own price elasticity of demand as if it was a positive number. You just have to remember that it's always negative. Demand slopes down. If the negative sign isn't there, just put it back in yourself. The own price elasticity of demand is just one of our elasticities. An elasticity is simply the percentage change in quantity divided by the percentage change in something else. Well, one of the something else's that we could think of is the price of a different good. For example, we might ask, what's the change in good I that's demanded when there's a change in the price of good J? We call that elasticity the cross-price elasticity of demand for good I with regards to the price of good J. And the formula is given over here on the left-hand side of our diagram. Notice that the top of the fraction is simply the percentage change in. Again, remember this term delta or this symbol delta means change in. The percentage change in the quantity of good I that consumers demand when there is a 1% change in the price of good J. So let's suppose that good eye refers to ice cream and good J refers to, let's say, jelly. If ice cream and jelly are substitutes, then a rise in the price of jelly will lead to an increase in demand for ice cream. That's the situation when they're substitutes. So this fraction is going to be positive. A rise in PJ leads to an increase in QID. So our cross-price elasticity of demand for good I with regards to the price of good J will be positive if goods I and J are substitutes. However, what if ice cream and jelly are complements? People like to have them together. Well, in that situation, by definition, a rise in the price of jelly is going to lead to a decrease in the amount of ice cream that people demand. That's the definition of a complement. So if there's a positive increase in the price of jelly, there will be a negative change in the quantity of ice cream demanded. And similarly, if there's a decrease in the price of jelly, that's going to lead to an increase in the amount of ice cream that people want to demand. So the sign of the top bit of a fraction is always going to be the opposite of the sign of the bottom bit of a fraction. Well, a positive divided by a negative or a negative divided by a positive is going to come up with a negative. So if goods I and J are complements, then the cross price elasticity of demand for good I with regards to the price of good J is going to be a negative number. What else can we do? Well, another one of our something else's may be income. So we can ask, what is the percentage change in the quantity of product I when there is a percentage change in income? So we can look at the income elasticity of demand for good I, and that's given by the formula 
on this slide. Notice that up the top of our fraction we have the percentage change in the quantity of good eye that consumers demand. That's the same as before, but now on the bottom of our fraction we're looking at the percentage change in income. Now we know that if as income rises the quantity of good eye that consumers demand also rises, so in other words if this fraction is positive, that by definition is a normal good. So our income elasticity of demand will be positive if good eye is a normal good. Indeed, we can go a bit further and say that if the income elasticity of demand for good eye is greater than 1, so that the quantity of good eye rises faster than the increase in income, or in other words, a 1% increase in income leads to more than a 1% increase in the quantity of good eye that consumers demand, we call that a luxury good. Of course, it may be the situation that as income rises, we reduce the amount of good eye that consumers demand. That is by definition an inferior good, so if the income elasticity of demand for good eye is a negative number, in other words income and quantity move in the opposite directions, then that means that good eye will be an inferior good. So far we've only looked at the percentage change in the quantity demanded of a particular product. But of course we could look at the percentage change in the quantity supplied of a particular product. For example, we might be interested in knowing how quickly the quantity of a product changes in terms of supply, how quickly the supply increases when there's a 1% increase in the price of a product, or how quickly the supply or the quantity of a product that's supplied decreases when the price drops. That is the own price elasticity of supply and our formula for own price elasticity is given over here on the left hand side. Notice that up the top we have the percentage change in the quantity of good eye but notice now we've got this superscript S. It's the quantity of good eye that's supplied how does that change when there's a change in the price of good eye? Now so long as our supply curve slopes up, we know that as the price of good eye rises, sellers would like to sell more good eye. Or in other words, the percentage change in the quantity of good eye supplied is going to be the same sign as the percentage change in the price of good eye. Positive increase in price, positive increase in quantity supplied. A drop in price, a drop in quantity supplied. So we know that our own price elasticity of supply is almost always going to be a positive number. When the supply curve slopes up, the own price elasticity of supply will be greater than zero. OK, now we've seen a bunch of definitions and formulas for elasticity. In our next presentation, we're going to start using the concept of elasticity.